I just felt like it was important, not for me. Um, it was for the players. Brian and Duffy set a powerful example for his Minnehaha Academy soccer team this season. The assistant coach didn't miss a game, despite injuries that probably should have killed him. It turns out the sport he fell in love with as a young child and played through college was far better than any painkiller. It was definitely therapy. There would be times where I wouldn't take my meds and I wouldn't feel anything because I was just there. And then instantly as we were going back to the car, I would feel pain again. There was a few games where we had upset victories and it was just, it came down to we wanted to keep fighting and because we knew Duffy had to fight every day. And yeah, he's just a big inspiration for us. Brian, who in addition to coaching is also a full-time custodian at the school, still can't recall the specifics of the deadly August 2nd natural gas explosion. And you have absolutely no memory of, of where you were at the moment or the, getting any warning or not. You don't remember anything. No. Nope. Well, I was washing windows throughout the summer, so I was probably doing something around there, maybe fixing something. Brian remembers vividly coaching a youth soccer game the night before the blast and then waking up 10 days later in the hospital with his body shattered. His right leg was amputated above the knee. His left leg was severely broken in three places, and he was suffering from a traumatic brain injury after being buried in debris. He was heartbroken to learn that two colleagues, Secretary Ruth Berg and fellow custodian John Carlson, died. John was amazing. He was just happy all the time, and. Of course, he had his dilly bars, as everybody probably knows, and he just um, had positivity all the time, and I just loved being around both of them. I um, just don't understand why I'm still here, and I don't understand why this happened. As Brian searches for meaning as part of his healing process, he is so grateful for the Minneapolis police officers who saved his life. Brian was pinned underneath this concrete cinder block wall with gas still spewing from the leak and flames spreading quickly. But that didn't stop Dean Milner and Greg Kosh. I mean, you, you see somebody, you know, laying there and, and there's rubble all over him. You know, he's, he's trapped. You know, there's fire going there and you, you can't leave him lay there. You, know, you have to go do something. So there really is no decision, actually. You know, we heard somebody aired that, uh, that gas was actually uh, uh, filling into the basement. And I think Greg and I looked right at each other. And uh, we, I, at least I won't speak for him, but I'll speak for me. I was thinking that was going to be my last day because I, I figured that there would be a secondary explosion. And our concern was to get everybody else out of there. Uh, we just knew that he and I weren't leaving until we got Brian. All, all I could think of is, boy, I hope my kids understand why I did this. I hope they understand because I was ready to go. Milner and Kosh, along with several other officers, hatched a plan. One began chipping away at the cinder blocks. The other somehow found enough superhuman strength to lift the wall, pulling Brian to safety. You look back at that and I just don't know how uh, you could ever do that. I've, I've seen that a couple times on this job, but it's I think God puts you where he, he wants you and he gives you the strength to do it. It doesn't humanly make sense. Like there's this big old piece of uh, concrete that they had to lift and only two people were able to lift it. That, that was all they had. And so they had to act fast and then at the same time they thought they were going to get blown up by gas because there was a fire that was really, really close by. And so they thought they were going to die at the same time as they were saving me. The pair of officers subsequently visited Brian in the hospital and they eventually took him out to lunch. A friendship forged from heroic bravery and overwhelming appreciation. And then he looked at us and he said, guys, thanks for saving me. And that's kind of really when all this really hit home for me, actually, kind of. Because, you know, you, to me, it was just, I was just doing my job. As for Brian, he doesn't know what the future holds. He's currently rehabbing and hopes to get a prosthetic just as soon as he can put full body weight on his broken left leg. His brain injury is healing, too. And while he has seen pictures and videos from the blast, he is scared to jog his memories too much because he doesn't want to relive the nightmare where two friends' lives were lost and his was changed forever. Instead, he and his wife are looking forward together. The couple is expecting their first child in January. A baby boy who will soon learn the incredible physical, mental, and emotional strength of his father. The only thing you can call it is a miracle. A soccer coach who just will not be defeated. I think I'm looking forward to just being able to stand and hold my baby, not in a rocker. 
Um, I've said that as the first thing for to many people that have asked me that question.